Greetings, welcome back. The 3 and plus 1 problem says start with any number. If it's even, cut it in half. If it's odd, multiply by 3 and add 1. The big question is, does every start number eventually reach 1? If we start with 7, we get 22, 11, 34, 17, 52, 26. So 26 is the result of this hairy function. If we could just get rid of this annoying plus one, then things would be a lot simpler. So what if we can make a rule that's equivalent to three n plus one, but uses only multiplication? For example, if n is such and such type number, multiply it by five thirds. Otherwise, multiply it by two fifths or three quarters. Then n would get replaced by something like this instead of this. And that might make our proofs easier. So our 1 half n is already in the right format, but how could we implement 3n plus 1 as a series of multiplications? That seems impossible. But in 2002, mathematician Ken Monks wrote a paper called 3n plus 1 minus the plus 1, where he showed a 1 million condition rule that mimics the 3n plus 1 rule without any uh, plus 1s. So that was really cool. And in this episode, I want to see if we can make a smaller rule that does the same thing and walk through how to do it. So, okay, we want to mimic some sequence like 3, 10, 5, 16, 8, 4, 2, 1. So we're going to use a trick from Kurt Gödel, John Conway, and Monks. And instead of starting with 3, we'll start with 2 to the 3, or 8. And then we'll uh, run our procedure until we reach another pure power of 2, which will be, hopefully, 2 to the 10th, or 1024. And that's how we get from 3 to 10. Uh, then... Um, 2 to the 10th will lead to 2 to the 5th, and so on. So here, the dot, dot, dot uh, is going to consist of other numbers that are a kind of scratch pad. Okay, so how do we get from 2 to the 3rd to 2 to the 10th? We've got to perform 3n plus 1 on the initial exponent to get 10. So first, we're going to replace 2 to the 3rd with 2 squared times 3 times 5 cubed. So what we're doing is we're going to keep decrementing the exponent of the 2 while simultaneously adding three to the exponent of the five each time. And in a couple of steps, we'll have three times five to the ninth. So see the nine? We just multiplied our input by three. Uh, and now for the next step, we drop the three and increment the five's exponent by one. And Viola, we have our answer 10. Unfortunately, it's five to the 10th and we need two to the 10th. So that's okay, we just decrement the five exponent while simultaneously incrementing the two exponent all the way here until we get two to the 10th. Now the nice thing about this sequence, besides getting the right answer, is that every step is a simple multiplication. If we see a number like two to the x, we multiply it by five cubed times three over two or 375 over two. If we see a number like two to the x, three to the y, five to the z, we multiply it by 120 5 over 2. And we do that um, until we reach a different kind of number here, 3 to the x, 5 to the y, which we multiply by 5 thirds. So you can see the trick. So right here, we did the plus 1, but we did it with a multiplication. So if I ever have to interview someone for a software engineering position, I'm going to ask them to implement addition using multiplication. That could be the start of a who's on first comedy routine. Okay, so what kind of number is 2 to the x, 3 to the y, 5 to the z? Unlike all these other types of numbers, it's divisible by 30, because it has all the factors. So a remainder of 0. And if I have 2 to the odd exponent, I'm going to have a remainder of 2 or 8, and so on. So all these conditions are something mod 30. All right, well, with this simple eight-way rule, we've implemented 3n plus 1 for odd start numbers. Now let's make a rule for even start numbers that'll take 2 to the 10th to 2 to the 5th. All we have to do is divide 10 in half, so we decrement the exponent um, by 2 several times, each time simultaneously incrementing the exponent of 3 by 1. So that gives us 3 to the 5th, and we can easily turn this into 5 to the 5th and turn that into 2 to the 5th. Now, why didn't we go straight from 3 to the 5th to 2 to the 5th? Well, that would introduce numbers of the form 2 to the x, 3 to the y, which we're already using over here. And when we see a number like that, we already know we can multiply by 3 quarters. 
but that wouldn't work over in this part of the sequence where we'd need to multiply by two thirds. So every number in our sequence has to pack in all the information it needs because the next number depends on it and it alone. So when we compute the next number, we can't look back to get an overall view of where we are in the sequence. Okay, so if we see two to an even exponent, we multiply by three and divide by four. If we see three to the x, we multiply by five thirds and so on. And if we look at um, the remainders mod 30 of these different types of numbers, we get this. Okay, that's our final rule. So with 18 conditions, uh, we no longer need the plus one. And here's the rule in action. If we start with two to the third, uh, which is eight, uh, the next step gives us 1,500, the next step 93,750, and so on until we hit 1,024, which is two to the 10th. And then we'll eventually get to 32, 65,536, 16, four, and two, which is two to the first. So here we got from two to the third all the way to two to the first. So does every number two to the x always reach two to the first? That's the same question raised by the three n plus one conjecture. But now we can address that question with a rule that's uh, simpler, at least in one way. Okay, thanks, and see you next time.